Love him or hate him, an entire generation was introduced to some of the coolest creatures from down under by the ever-enthusiastic Steve Irwin. The world knew him as the Crocodile Hunter, but it was the kind of hunting most animal lovers could get behind. The world's animals lost one of their biggest cheerleaders to a tragic accident in 2006, but his work is still making a difference. Let's take a look at the man in khakis. Whoo! Danger, danger, danger. Not quite fearless. For a guy who didn't mind being face-to-face -face with angry crocodiles, Irwin still had a couple animals he was terrified of. In a 2001 clip, Irwin can be seen paddling down a river in Zambia when he comes across a group of hippos. According to Terry Irwin's voiceover, hippo groups aren't just dangerous, they're unpredictable. And by crikey, they get grumpy. They pushed me right out of the river. I was quite fearful and respectful of them, so I went around them. I left my canoe in the end. When Scientific American asked Irwin what animal he wasn't comfortable with, he responded, parrots, yeah. For some reason, parrots have to bite me. That's their job. I don't know why that is. They've nearly torn my nose off. I've had some really bad parrot bites. No anti-venom. In a 1991 TV appearance on a local kids show, Irwin had just finished explaining why his non-venomous python won't bite him when things took an unsettling turn. He can't eat me and he doesn't feel scared. Um, he doesn't feel, I don't scare him, so he won't bite. Um, he might have to cut him, he's biting my neck. <laughs> <laughs> with bites coming so unexpectedly, you'd assume Irwin would have traveled with a stash of anti-venom, but according to what he told Reptiles magazine, he never carried any with him. His reason? When I grab a hold of them, this karma exudes through my fingertips into the animal, and they feel a lot more comfortable and I don't get bitten, and I take great pride that I don't get envenomated. I don't carry anti-venom, never have, never will. That's not really how karma works, but we do believe that Steve Irwin was magic. Sorry. We Wait, call these ones bitey. Oh, okay, nice. You just bit me on the arm. Yeah, you have an right hour now. to live. Uh... <laughs> Complete support. When Larry King talked to Irwin in 2004, not much time had passed since Siegfried and Roy's famous tiger act went bad. Horn was attacked in the throat by one of those tigers, lost a huge amount of blood. Reactions were mixed, as many people didn't think it was appropriate to keep wild animals in that kind of environment. But Irwin said it was nothing short of tragic and chimed in with his complete support of acts like theirs, explaining, They did what not many people can do. They got tigers into people's hearts. I believe that the time has come where if we don't get animals into people's hearts, they're going to go extinct. We're running out of time right now. Ouch. It wasn't until halfway through his Larry King interview that Irwin admitted that his collarbone was currently broken. He said that though he had an almost magical ability to communicate with animals, he did get hurt quite a bit and told a story about breaking a finger while catching crocodiles. His finger snapped at the knuckle, and he said he just wanted to cut it off, but certain family members weren't so thrilled with that idea. But my daughter said, oh please, daddy. I said, no, it would be great, Bindi. We'll have a little pet daddy finger. Over the top. No one talks about Irwin or his work without commenting on the over-the-top insanity that made him famous. Ooh, our first big cats have arrived, yep. The tigers are here. It's what makes people love him or hate him. And according to what he told Scientific American, that was the idea. It excites them, which helps me to educate. I believe that education is all about being excited about something. So if we can get people excited about animals, then by crikey, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to save them. Irwin said that he knew people were more likely to become invested in a conservation project when they were emotionally invested in the animals. So he made it a point to share his own crazy, zany enthusiasm. And it worked. Tragic truth. Irwin somehow seemed completely invincible, and his bond with animals made his passing seem that much more bizarre. The footage of the tragic event was given to Terry Irwin and never broadcast. In 2014, his cameraman Justin Lyons revealed that he and Irwin had come across a giant stingray that unexpectedly lashed out at Irwin. Lyons said he hadn't even realized anything was wrong at first, as he had been focused on the stingray. When he looked back at Irwin, he saw the hole in his chest. And he just sort of calmly looked up at me and said, I'm dying. And that was the last thing he said. Irwin's father reportedly criticized Lyons for going public and reopening old wounds, saying, For a lot of people trying to get on with their lives without Steve, it wasn't something that helped by any means. Lifesaver After Irwin's passing in 2006, global media picked up and ran with a slew of tributes, including a story from an American diver named Scott Jones, who owes Irwin his life. Jones told the Sydney Morning Herald that he was diving off the coast of Mexico when he was caught up in a sea surge and battered against rocks. Once Jones managed to climb up onto the rocks, Irwin picked up the distress call nearby, found the stranded diver, and hit the water to swim out to help him to safety. Jones said, We'd love to go to Australia and tell his wife and kids just what a great man he is. He was a hell of an educator. 
from kids all the way up to old farts like me, he was a hero. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.